you have the stronger line of thunderstorms out here to the west. And right now around the Athens area, those are the heaviest thunderstorms just to the east of Athens working their way toward Coffee City out of Maybank. A report of some hail that would be considered severe it was in the one inch diameter range, maybe a little bit bigger than that. So some ping pong ball sized hail within the thunderstorm. There could be a couple of wind gusts that are close to 60 miles an hour, especially on the leading edge here up toward Lindale, uh, which isn't currently, I believe, under any type of warning right now. But that looks like a stronger wind signature right here. And then you've got the kind of a push of the line coming out toward more station toward Frankston. So right in here, you may be getting a stronger wind. And again, not like last night at this point, but this is probably a good idea for anybody who's going to be out working, doing cleanup from last night's uh, storm that moved through parts of Smith County, that we do have this coming through. It doesn't look like the lightning strikes are as plentiful. So that would also tell me that the thunderstorms are not as strong, but they could gain strength here as we head through the next hour or so. So currently moving west to east, roughly at about 40 miles an hour or even 45 miles an hour, these thunderstorms are really picking up steam. They are headed off toward noonday in Chandler. The arrival time in Chandler is estimated to be about 145, noonday 155, Bascom about 207, White House around 215, Overton about 230 and Turner Town at 240. So that's the main part of this line that we're, we're tracking. This would be the, the area that could have the 60 mile an hour winds or a little bit stronger than that. And again, that's gonna head over toward White House also in Bascom and Overton and stay just to the south of Kilgore. But still, I think some rain will move through Kilgore and down toward Bradford. And I think also Frankston will see those scattered showers and those stronger thunderstorms move through there. So uh, we'll take a look at velocity on this just to verify that we don't have any uh, excessive winds out of that other than a signature that would tell us that we do have uh, some kind of idea that we could see these thunderstorms that would be um, picking up a little bit of strength. But otherwise, um, if you've got any questions, especially over on our Facebook app, just search or go to KYTX and then I will find you there and we will try to answer as many questions as we possibly can. So. Uh, again, this is what the overall look like is right now, and there's our velocity signature. We are picking up just a little bit of rotation within the clouds, so that's certainly possible. And this is going to be just to the east of Athens in Henderson County. Here's Smith County. There's Tyler and Bullard. And, of course, we're watching that carefully. And, uh, Chandler, if you can click on this, this is our, called our Titan indicator, and so we can kind of get an idea inside the storm of what's going on there. And he'll click on that icon, and then it'll bring up sort of a, a template. And so the maximum hail size inside that storm right now would be considered a severe thunderstorm. So about the size of quarters, the probability of hail is 90%, but the probability that it is reaching that quarter size right now is only at 40%. Uh, tornado impact is relatively low. There was some imp uh, wind impact that was showing up with that and some hail. So it seems like there's a larger hail impact with some wind impact and then the flooding impacts about four and a half. So that says that it is uh, kind of a gusty thunderstorm with some heavy rainfall. And again, that severe thunderstorm warning goes until two o'clock this afternoon. All right, let's go back to reflectivity and check out some other areas along the line of showers and thunderstorms. And this is the one this goes all the way up to Mineola Oak Grove currently between I'd say Mount Pleasant and all the way down just to the western parts of Smith County. No thunderstorm warnings along that part of the line. We come down here to the west, southwest of Athens, and no thunderstorm warnings now entering into Anderson County. Out to the east, and we don't want to overlook these areas here. I know a lot of focus is back here, but let's concentrate out to the east. These are the cells that if they're not lined up, these are the cells that can become what we call discrete. If they can become discrete, they're feeding off of the environment by themselves. If they can do that, they have the potential, potential to become stronger. So there's currently one right now in southern Rusk County. There's also one moving up into Panola County and eventually up into Harrison County. So we'll keep an eye on these cells uh, because they could become stronger. This is the area that's deeper into the tornado watch. The areas back here to the west aren't really even in the tornado watch, but these cells are moving into the watch counties. All right. So what we've seen so far here, that little bit of rotation there to the south of Athens, and then we've got the heavier thunderstorm from Mineola down to the south. So 
Uh, maybe we go in here and, and zoom in on that area with velocity south of Athens and kind of check that out. And they just and issued a new uh, severe thunderstorm warning, including northern Cherokee County as well as Smith County. This is in place until 2.45 p.m. Uh, radar indicated gusts upwards of 60 miles per hour as well as radar indicated hail upwards of quarters in size, moving right. eastward at 45 miles per hour. So that's radar indicated, and now we do have a, a severe thunderstorm warning in Smith County. So let's track that line of thunderstorms as it moves through Smith County. County. Of course, we got hit pretty hard in Smith County last night, so we want to keep everybody uh, up to date on when that when those storms could roll into your neighborhood. Again, they're moving to the east. What Chandler about 45 40, miles, 45 per hour. miles an hour. So these are racing eastward. So they're going to be at the airport about 147. Uh, Tyler to just before two o'clock, then White House just after two. Troop about 215. Overton about 226. Longview right around 230, and then Henderson at about two. 41. And again, what we're doing here is just kind of bringing you up to date as these thunderstorms move into Smith County. We will eventually leave our television broadcast and continue to stream the information on our YouTube channel, also on our website, cbs19.tv, and on our Facebook page. And over on the Facebook page, you know, we always welcome the questions and we can try to answer those uh, for you as we as we get uh, into the afternoon and stay on, of course, that platform. But right now we have the severe thunderstorm warning for Smith County and you said northern Cherokee and a portion of Gregg County. Is that true? Is that right? Yeah, far southwestern Gregg County, northern Cherokee County and Smith County. These are all uh, in the same warning that is in effect until 245 this afternoon. So about another hour from now, we'll continue to slowly uh, watch this line as it moves from west to east through uh, a good portion of Smith County. And so far, all we're seeing in this are radar indicated uh, wind gusts close to 60 miles an hour, correct? Yeah, nothing as far as official spotter reports coming from Smith County or any of the counties due west of there as far as uh, wind gusts or hail size. But we, uh, again, do just, uh, we're going basically off of the radar indication, which is 60 mile per hour gusts as well as hail upwards of quarters in size. All right, so let's go on up here toward Mount Pleasant. There's really, really only two warnings going on right now. So we have this warning here at uh, moving through Mount Pleasant, Camp County, Titus County is also involved in that. And then we head down the line and a couple of uh, non-severe thunderstorm warned areas that we're looking at down until we get down to that cell as it moves uh, south of Mineola. So um, we got Mineola involved in uh, in that area and then that line looks a little sharper the farther to the southwest we go so our area of concern for a strong wind gust is going to be right in here and I'm, what I'm not seeing here this this afternoon are those indications for those little notch spin ups like we had yesterday uh, I'm not seeing that we don't have the same strong winds pushing in behind it like we had last night all right so we we do have uh, a little bit of a, a weaker echo region out here in front, but behind it, we're not seeing the strong push of winds. The strongest winds today are really going to be out to the east, and they've already sort of moved through east Texas. The strongest low-level winds at about 5,000 feet that often steer these thunderstorms and can provide that extra little bit of energy that can cause the downbursts, those winds have moved into Louisiana. So if we're going to get anything, it's going to be perhaps a downburst if the thunderstorm were to collapse. Uh, on its own nature, maybe as its colder air starts to build within the thunderstorm, that colder air, of course, being heavier, more dense, it rushes downward and outward. So we could catch that. So I think the winds are going to stay in that uh, 60 to 65 mile an hour range. We will, however, continue to watch these little areas. You can see sometimes we'll, we, if this can stretch out long enough, we can develop what's called a line echo wave pattern if a little area of low pressure can form somewhere along the line. So we're keeping an eye on that also. And then as we head up into western parts of Smith County, let's zoom in on this portion of the cell that is currently warned. That's northwest of Tyler. Uh, we can go in just even a little bit tighter than that. That's right there's Interstate 20. There's Tyler Pounds. So you're going up toward Lindale. Lindale, I think, is just outside of the warned area. But anywhere in here, the winds are probably getting gusty right now. And if you're experiencing those winds, and you can let us know on, the, on Facebook, let us know what type, type of winds you're experiencing. I'm seeing on Facebook a lot of folks from Alto now joining us, and Precious Mac is joining us from Lindale. And then we've got uh, someone watching us from Arkansas. So we might talk about Arkansas if we have a little bit of time. So Chandler right now is uh, kind of going around looking for different radar products. And what we're not seeing at this portion, or this time but anyway, 
is a lot of, uh, let's say, a kind of rotation within that cell. Severe thunderstorm warning goes till 245 for Cherokee, Gregg, Rusk, and Smith County. And that severe thunderstorm warning for Henderson County goes until 2 o'clock. And then that will transition over to this broader, wider severe thunderstorm warning for Cherokee, Gregg, Rusk, and Smith County. All right, so this is the cell that's moving into Tyler. Here's the loop. And you can see this is just moving east of the airport now, coming out 64 to the east, 31 also from west to east, 69 highway heading down, Mineola Highway to heading down into Tyler. So here's 155 coming into town. So it's essentially just west of that, and it's about ready to uh, descend upon us. So uh, Larry, our director here this afternoon, Larry, if you could take one of the Skycam shot that we have up, and we should be have a good, pretty good view. You can see how dark it is getting off here to the west. And maybe we can, uh, we'll watch these clouds just sort of sweep over the city. But it'll come in darker, of course, lighter, then get darker. And then as the storm moves across, we'll see the heavier rainfall uh, move into Tyler. So it's just on the edge of town, right along the, the loop to the west side of town, but eventually headed uh, eastward. All right, back to the maps we'll go. And uh, we'll give you this update again here. There's White House seeing individual cells. And I see a new severe thunderstorm warning that popped uh, up. That was the old thing. I was okay. trying to get us reset so I could switch over to the products. Oh, sure. Yeah, <clears throat> no, no worries there. All right, so uh, right now that's what you're looking at is uh, the severe thunderstorm warning. Here is, it goes out into southwestern part of Gregg County. That's western Rusk County. This is northern Cherokee County. And it looks like we're going to leave that uh, the Henderson County warning, and then the cell will move out into these other counties, and these severe thunderstorm warrant cells will continue. So I'm just waiting to see if we're hearing any kind of uh, thunder or lightning. All right, so uh, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll probably stay. we got soccer starting at 2 o'clock. We'll stay on for the next couple of minutes, and then we'll join soccer in progress. But again, if you want to continue to follow along with the storms as they move through, unless they come tornad become tornadic, I think what we're going to do is cover this with Facebook. We'll also cover it on our YouTube channel, and we'll stream this on CBS19.tv. So if you have our mobile app, if you've got our phone, you have our mobile app, just simply download that app or switch over to the app. You'll see we're live. You click on that live button, and you just follow along with what we're doing there in terms of keeping everything, um, everyone up to date. But we won't have to take up all the TV time unless, of course, we have the tornado warning. And if, unless, of course, we would see something uh, in these thunderstorms that would become, let's say, destructive, or we got a considerable tag on that. Last night, we came on early and talked about the cells because they were capable of producing 70, 70 75 mile an hour winds, right? So we came on early, and then we started to notice that along the line there were little, little notches, and those notches eventually became tornadoes. So we were out ahead of that storm as it was moving in, just judging and knowing exactly what to look like or look at on the radar product. So it's a long line right now. It doesn't look real sharp on that leading edge. I don't see a lot of wind coming in behind it. So we're probably talking about 60 or 65 mile an hour winds. We'll keep an eye on some of the storm spotter reports. The only spotter report that we've seen so far today, uh, Chandler, is is the one out of, uh, was it Malakoff? With yeah, the Malakoff or inch and a half hail, which I think, you know, that's more roughly in this ballpark of, uh, Closer to, you know, ping pong ball size or golf ball size hail. So that's the only official uh, storm, uh, storm spotter reports that we've seen. Of course, the rest of the action in the chat has just been concerned uh, uh, with the warnings that we've seen issued. Again, radar indicated, which means that we just take the data that we see on radar and we can use that as our estimate, which is why we have the warnings issued that we do. And therefore, winds upwards of 60 miles per hour, again, that's radar indicated as well as radar indicated quarters or hail the size of quarters. So as this line continues to march off farther to the east, uh, we're gonna continue to have to keep a very close eye out on things. And I'm just gonna get us switched over here to where we're feeding from all the radar sites as far as our velocity product is concerned. Brett, it was doing that thing we were talking about just a little bit earlier, where it's only pulling from one site at a time. Okay, yeah, we want it to be pulling from both sites for sure. And that way, uh, because where this thunderstorm is located, it's kind of a distance from the Dallas-Fort Worth site and still a distance from the Shreveport site. So both radar beams are sort of flying over top of it. And we need to ha we have to switch back and forth between the closest ones so we can get the best data available for you there. But again, that severe thunderstorm warning.
goes until 245. That includes a little portion of uh, Gregg County. That is not the city of Longview. It goes down here to just to the edge of Henderson in Rusk County till 245. Someone was asking me on Facebook about Rusk. Currently Rusk, I think you're going to see some thunderstorms, but right now you are not in a severe thunderstorm warning. You are, however, under a tornado watch until 5 p.m. So this whole line of cells uh, with the cold front is moving east roughly 45 miles an hour. So it's probably not moving as fast as last night and it'll probably take a little bit longer to get through here. But again, that's one area, that's the front, but prefrontal, we've got these cells that we really need to pay attention to also. The ones that are coming out uh, from the west along the front have the potential to produce a 60 mile an hour wind. And they're about four minutes away from making it into downtown Tyler. So if you're cleaning up or watching, maybe watching us on the stream and you're in the Azalea district, the rain is going to be here very soon. White House 211, then we head toward Browning and we're looking at about 216, Overton around 230, Kilgore just also around 230, Henderson about 247, and Easton at 255. That's if this continues on its current path and the storm remains as strong as it is right now, it'll move out into those areas. Uh, severe thunderstorm warnings, of course, can occasionally do create tornadoes. We may have had one last night. We're going to let the National Weather Service confirm that for sure, but it sure looked like it, judged on and based on the power flashes that we were seeing, based on some of the damage that we've seen also, it looks like something stronger than a straight line wind, uh, wider than it's just a little small area isolated of straight line winds may have hit Tyler last night, but uh, a few other areas also had some wind damage. And when you have a line like we had last night, you have the capability of having these quick little spin ups along that line. Sometimes there can be several. If we had a number in mind, more than six, seven, eight little spin ups last night, I wouldn't be surprised if they went back and found that. Of course, some of that could have just been straight line wind damage, so we'll have to certainly look at that. That little cell there looks okay. It's within the severe thunderstorm warned area, but I do not believe that that is gonna cause any problems. The real concern here is just on this edge, and it's really focused right in here. So maybe if we can go to velocity and look at that and see if we're getting any kind of wind speed or indication that yeah. perhaps in this area, Chandler, maybe, maybe a 60 <clears throat> mile an hour wind? Yeah, I've, we're still trying to get the uh, product to where it's showing both um, from each site that is. Oh, I, well, yeah, well, I think we would switch back and forth between. I think yeah, we're there right in the middle <coughs> right there now. There's a few. All right, while you do that, let's go ahead and take a look at our sky cam. Look at this shot. This is the thunderstorm that's moving overhead right now. Look at the base of that cloud. All right, so there's there's cooler air. So this is going to be warmer, uh, warmer air back on the left side of your screen, right? So the air aloft's a little bit warmer. Uh, but as you, the higher you go into a thunderstorm, of course, the air gets colder. There may be some hailstones up there. There's a lot of ice crystals. And so that colder air, because it's heavier, it rushes downward. And as it rushes downward, more clouds form. And so what you end up seeing is this darker base. Now, that's encouraging to see. I don't see any type of wall cloud on that structure. I don't see anything that gives us an indication that we might be looking at something that would somehow turn tornadic. Uh, but it certainly shows us that there are... Uh, the, the possibility of some heavy downpours, maybe some hail within that uh, area, within that cloud. And I'm going to just kind of uh, pan this over to the right just a little bit. And as we pan that over to the right, we'll be able to, you can see how fast it's moving. So this is a really rapidly moving um, cell that's moving into that area that we are talking about. So this will pan back over and you'll see it. Let's go back to Skycam. There it is. Okay. So I know that looks like you know, wow, what is that? Why does it go all the way to the ground like that? Well, that's heavy rain, maybe some hail within that. Uh, that is not a, um, I don't see any kind of wall cloud or lowering on the side of that for sure, but it's a rapidly moving storm. I don't see any sort of, what I would be looking for is a little tail of clouds that would tell me that there's an inflow ta tail coming into that. And we would also see some clouds on the left side of it that would sort of be in a, in a line that would indicate what we would indicate or call a rear um, a rear flank downdraft. So I'm not seeing anything of that nature. So we're really probably what we're looking at there in the center portion of your screen is just a heavy area of rain and wind with some hail also involved in that. So that's what that cell looks like right now. Now, just underneath the Tyler word, can you see the Tyler word right there? Do you see that little, that little appendage that's coming off of the left side of that? So that's inflow into the storm. So there's likely some rear flow energy coming into the storm and then that's flowing upward and it's helping to maintain the, the updraft as it moves overhead and it moves through. On the right side of it where the sky is clearer, 
and we may start to feel the wind here in just a second, that's where the air is rushing out and gushing downward. So what I'm gonna do is switch over the camera. Let's switch the camera view to our CBS 19 camera and yeah, we'll be able to, uh, to see that a little bit better view from, from that vantage point there. And that should give us the vantage point of the storm uh, almost, it may have already moved overhead of the CBS 19 studios fast as it's moving. You can see the clearing sky in behind it. But again, this would be a great view here because we're not seeing any type of lowering. We're not seeing any type of a uh, wall cloud or anything of that nature. And it doesn't look like there's much precipitation, at least in this part of that storm. And I haven't felt much of the way of wind at all with it as it has moved overhead. I wonder if we could pan that around a little bit and see if to there's the some. To the right, yeah. Yeah, maybe to the right, maybe, because now it looks like it's almost moved, well, to the to the east of us. It, so it's really moving rapidly. If this cell is moving probably about 50 miles an hour. So we'll pan over here and try to find a different portion of the storm. You can see how fast those those scud clouds on the bottom of that are racing. So there's a pretty good view. Uh, that, that's a good, good view right there. Yeah. All right, yeah, so this is the thunderstorm itself. Uh, and this is going to be off. So this is the uh, loop looking east, right? So this is up to the northeast now of Troop in the Loop. So that's where the heaviest part of that cell is. Let's correlate that by going back to radar. And on radar and reflectivity or in this area here, we'll be able to see. There you can see some of the stronger winds right now. It appear that they are on the, uh, the uh, Smith County and Cherokee County line. And right in here, so here's our TV station down on this part of town and we are looking up into that part of the storm right there. So that part of the storm is where that little heavier cell was moving through at this point. So we should get into some heavy rain all across Tyler within the next few minutes and into White House within the next few minutes and also more station within the next few minutes. And then that will move off to the east. So we're starting to feel the wind here a little bit. Uh, looks like the wind. All right, let's go back to the sky cam so you can kind of see what the wind is doing to the TV station camera on top of the studio. Again, looking at that one part of the cell that's moving eastward. So uh, it's shaking it around just a little bit, but uh, certainly not as violently as last night, but still a 60 mile an hour wind with these on top of what we had last night. Boy, that's you know really not what we want to see at this point, just because we'd like to avoid anything of that nature and, and any more damage. Uh, let's see, we got Mike Anderson telling us we have probably 60 mile, mile, mile an hour winds. He's too south of Chandler. Uh, not a lot, but some pea-sized hail. All right, so that's a great report from Mike and we appreciate um, him letting us know. And then uh, let's see, we've got some other people uh, commenting. So what, we're, what I'm looking for here is just some, some storm reports. They're gonna be unsubstantiated, so hopefully everyone is going to be honest with this here when we read this, but I'll try to vet that before I repeat it on air. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. All right. So that's where we are right now. I'm just kind of going through that. So you can see you're looking at the storm. Now you're going to look at the heavier rain band that's going to come across a part of Troop and the Loop. This is the Loop looking out going east. The Green Acres is up in here. Um, and then we've got, we're coming back down toward uh, Troop Highway, which would be off to your north of the TV station here. And of course, we've got the uh, bowling alley just to our right, and, the, and that would be Old Troop Highway right here, and then University would be up there at that next light. So that's kind of the vantage point that we're looking at at this time. All right, let's go back to radar. And on our reflectivity note here, uh, we'll, we'll put another track on this and give everybody kind of an updated view as to when these storms will arrive. There's Gilmer. We've got Jose Alonzo and, and Colleen Campbell up in Gilmer, they're gonna be tracking the storm for us. And then we come down on the main part of the storm that's warned, and it's really Smith County. It's just Smith County that is warned right now. And so White House 210, Browning 216, and I didn't mention Tyler because it's hitting Tyler right now, so we are in it. Uh, if you're on the east side of Tyler, out toward Chapel Hill is probably two minutes away. Uh, Overton, Longview, Lakeport, Henderson. All right, so Longview is 230. Henderson is 248, so it's 206 right now, so about a half hour till it makes it uh, to uh, Longview, and then Tatum at about 304. So there is your line, that's your area of concern right now that has the severe thunderstorm warning on it. We go down into northern parts of Anderson County, not uh, severe warned. I believe that, uh, Chandler, is that, that light, lightning back there on the west side of that, or is that a little bit of hail in there? Uh, a little bit of both on the southwest side, uh, northwest Anderson County, just to the north and west of Palestine. It looks like uh, radar is maybe picking up on what appears to be uh, maybe some pocket change size tail upwards of uh, 
anywhere from you know dimes to pennies or nickels in size there's no significant weather advisory on it which would just mean that we have you know gusts anywhere from 40 to 50 miles per hour or things such as pocket size changed tail or pocket change size tail uh, so we'll keep a close eye out on that in our uh, National Weather Service chat. But it appears even, you know, just like we saw from our Tyler cameras, this line were to arrive into the region, we'll probably get some, you know, gusty winds, very heavy rain. You'll hear some rumbles of thunder, maybe have some, uh, I think someone uh, here referred to it one time as sonic ice hail. Oh, yeah, I call it that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, the sonic ice yeah, hail. We might have some of that. Everybody's pretty familiar with that, so oh, you know, yeah. with, the, with the sonic <laughs> the A sonic little bit driveway. smaller. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I think at this point what we can do is uh, send everyone back to the to regular programming, back to soccer, uh, and then we can continue to stream this. So I'll pause so that we can take our and go back to live programming. Now, if we do have a tornado warning, we will come back on. Uh, but right now we are. Tyler is in the storm, so it, you know maybe, maybe what we do here is we wait for this to pass through the city of Tyler, and then once it gets closer to Longview, we could come back on again. But I'm just kind of giving you an idea that we are going to stay on on CBS19.tv and our Facebook page, so we're going to be streaming the information, but we're going to use other platforms to do that unless we had a tornado warning and we had life-threatening winds, which we don't have right now. Uh, still take it seriously. I would still, uh, if storms make you anxious or nervous, this is one you could easily go to your shelter, you know, the innermost portion of your house, the bathroom with no windows, a closet or something like that, and you could ride it out from there. I would just stay away from windows in case we do have a sudden burst of wind. We are just not picking that up right now, and we've been checking this out with velocity, and we've been picking up maybe some range of about 55 to 60 miles an hour, and it just doesn't have that type of feature to it that tells us that this is anything that's possibly more than that. Now, I'd keep an eye down here. Uh, this looks like this could be sharpening just a little bit. Uh, Chandler, let's zoom in on Tyler here and kind of give everyone just a, a specific area of Tyler, of what they're seeing right now. So there's the airport. So the heaviest now is just going to get into Midtown and through the Azalea District, which was hit pretty hard. And then that was, it still hasn't reached New Chapel Hill yet, but it will soon. We got some lightning strikes, but nowhere near the lightning strikes we had last night. Last night we had tremendous amounts of lightning and we're just not seeing that with this storm. And a lot of times we will monitor the lightning and if it's increasing, the thunderstorm is increasing. If there is a lot of lightning with it, then you know you've got either a lot of hail or you've got bigger hail within that storm or you've got a stronger updraft in the storm. That's just not happening right now. Okay, we do have some lightning. Lightning's always dangerous. Don't get me wrong there. Lightning's always dangerous, can be deadly. But what I'm looking at is the power of the storm based on the number of lightning strikes, which also would tell us the rainfall rates. A lot of times rainfall rates uh, are excessive when you have a ton of lightning, and it's just not filling up the screen. Last night at one point, Colleen Campbell and I were tracking the lightning strikes. There were 700 lightning strikes within about a 10-minute period. That looks like there's about 30 to 40, maybe 100, but that's it. So that, this is uh, just not as strong of a storm as it was last night. Severe thunderstorm warning again goes till 245. That's a portion of Gregg County. There's Rusk County. There's Cherokee County. And now we're starting to talk about eastern parts of Smith County. Maybe let's do another uh, storm track on that and get everybody up to date on what, they, what time they can expect the storm to move uh, into their areas. Uh, again, it's moving out to the east, almost to the northeast here, roughly at about 45 miles an hour. So White House still in that 210 to 211 time frame, so it should be arriving in White House any minute now. Troop about 223, Kilgore right around 230, Longview 237, Henderson about 250, Easton right around 256, and Marshall at 307. So once you're, again, the tornado watch goes until 5, so we're not surprised to see areas like Marshall seeing this, this storm move through there at about 3 o'clock. And, and this line could take till about 4 or 5 before it reaches down towards center and gets on out of the entire area. Do you want to try before, velocity again? Uh, yeah, I was going to do really quickly before we uh, tried velocity and headed over to our streaming platforms. We did have the National Weather Service issue what we call, I would mentioned it just a moment ago, a significant weather advisory, which means just below severe thunderstorm threshold. And it's going to be for the portion of the line that's currently passing through Upshur County and is currently the leading edge making its way 
into Gilmer. So this portion of the line that I just circled on your screen through Upshur County has wind gusts capable upwards of 50 miles per hour, which is just below our severe thunderstorm warning criteria. And it's also got the history of producing what is nickels and pennies in hail, which again, typically we use quarters as a size of reference for a severe thunderstorm warning. And we'll put a track on this as well. This part of the line's got a little more juice on it, moving eastward at about 50 miles per hour. So again, it doesn't have a severe thunderstorm warning on it. It could always intensify a little bit more. So that's something we'll keep a close eye out for. And of course, if you join us on our streaming platforms, you'll be able to get the latest information on this part of the segment. But as the storm continues to move off to the east at 50 miles per hour, those of you in Gladewater, be prepared for some heavy rain in your neighborhood and you'll hear some gusts of wind and rumbles of thunder as well coming up in about three to four minutes or city closer to 223 Avenger closer to 233 Harleton or Haroldson I'm sorry and closer to 238 Jefferson 251 Woodlawn 255 and then all the way towards uncertain which is right towards the border of Louisiana and Texas closer to 310. So again, this portion of the line not warned. It's very close to severe thunderstorm warning criteria, but something that we'll just have to keep a close eye on for and we'll continue to keep you posted about it as well on our streaming platforms. All right, so I think this would be a good time. We, we've just kind of filled everybody in. We'll go in over, over the warnings one more time. We have the severe thunderstorm warning till 245. Smith County right now, uh, radar indicated wind potentially up to 60 miles an hour. And then we have the other severe thunderstorm warning uh, up here to the north just a little bit. I believe that's going to be north of Upshur County. And this is moving off to the north into the northeast. So there are your cities involved. Kilgore, 233, Longview about 238, Mount Selman here at about 215. I say that because I think right now is a good time that we can make this switch back over to our streaming platform on CBS19.tv and also continuing our coverage on our Facebook page. There's our other warning up here for part of Titus County, Camp Franklin, Morris, and Titus County. That goes until 215. So that's going to last for just a few more minutes and judging by the cell as it's starting to now move out of the polygon and it has not been extended this may just be either uh, become a significant weather advisory or it may uh, they may allow that severe thunderstorm watch or warning to drop all right so uh, we're going to now go so send you back over to our our mobile app our cbs19.tv website or our youtube channel uh, we appreciate everyone for, for watching. If we do have a tornado warning, we will come back on. But please continue to follow us with our Facebook stream, our YouTube stream, and our CBS19.tv stream. We will see you just after we take this little bit of a break on the other side on our, um, on our, uh, our social media channels. Larry, are we all good for our streaming platform? Streaming should still be going. Okay, perfect. All right. So if you're continuing to stick with us on our streaming platforms, thanks for doing so. We got back to regular programming on CBS 19 for some Champions League soccer. And, of course, if we have a tornado warning, we will be sure to get you live and back on the air or be back on the air as far as uh, if we're dealing with anything such as a tornado warning and any of that good stuff. So here's kind of an overlook at what we're dealing with across the region. We just had a severe thunderstorm warning in Titus County that has expired and we still got an ongoing severe thunderstorm warning in portions of Smith County. This is currently in place until 245 this afternoon. Again, this is the line of thunderstorms that we're keeping a very close eye out for these 
are going to continue to march off to the east at about 45 miles per hour. So really we've got two sections that we're going to keep a close eye out for as we continue coverage here on all of our streaming platforms. You'll notice that we've got some uh, clusters of showers and weaker thunderstorms that are out ahead of the main line and we're also keeping a very close eye out on this line and this is the main event associated with the cold front that's currently marching through our area and on the back side of it we've got some drier air, some cooler air that's going to make its way into the region. So we'll go ahead and zoom on in on our severe thunderstorm warning that's currently rolling through Smith County right now. And as it does, this is continuing to move off to the east at 45 miles per hour. And Larry, would we be able to take our Tyler camera, our Di director Larry hanging around with us this afternoon? I did want to show off the rain that's currently falling. This is from our camera atop the Chase building. We've got it pointed off to the north and the west towards downtown just to the east of downtown and you can see that we've got some very heavy rain falling we've got what appears to be some pea-sized hail uh, from radar reflectivity that's not confirmed but radar reflectivities of pea-sized hail very heavy rain as well as some very gusty winds and i'm going to take just a moment to switch over to our cbs 19 studio cam we're located here at Troop in the Loop, and you'll see that from our CBS 19 studio camera, again, some very heavy rain. If you look closely at the parking lot, you can see the water whipping in the wind as it falls from the sky. Again, uh, radar indicated what appears to be pea-sized hail as well. So this is gonna continue to move off to the east at 45 miles per hour. And if we could go ahead and switch back to max one and we can go ahead and put a storm track on this, you'll notice that again, this is moving off to the east about 45 miles per hour, a little bit more of a northeasterly track here over the last little while. And this includes towns such as Troop by 224, into Overton again by 230, into Kilgore by 234, Lake Sport by about 247, Henderson 252, Tatum by 307, and then all the way into Marshall by 312. So this has picked up some steam, starting to move a little bit faster, which is, of course, some good news. And this is going to continue to march off to the east. And I think, uh, especially for places along into the north of I-20, once we hit about 3, 330, that's when we're going to be all clear. And then I think from there, our tornado watch that's in place we'll start to see counties dropped from that. So we'll kind of uh, reset a little bit here and go back to our tornado or tornado watch that's currently in place. And we've got many counties in East Texas that are under this watch until 5 p.m. That includes places such as Mount Pleasant, Gilmer, into Longview, Tyler, Jacksonville, Carthage, Henderson, Longview, Nacogdoches, into Lufkin Center, St. Augustine, as well as Hemp Hill. So all these counties that you see in pink currently have a tornado watch that's in place until 5 p.m. So as this line moves from west to east, we've got a better environment to work with within the tornado watch. Now, that doesn't mean that we have a tornado warning that's going on right now. If that were to be the case, we'd be live on all of our platforms. But instead, that just means as this cold front continues to march through this region, there are ingredients in play in the atmosphere that are conducive for a tornado to develop. So again, no active tornado warnings, but we do have ingredients in play helping out the atmosphere this afternoon that if we were to get the right mix of those together, we could definitely see a tornado warning be, be issued here by the end of the afternoon and the watch again goes until 5 p.m. So we'll go back to radar reflectivity and kind of zoom out to get a bigger picture across the region of what's going on so far. Again, this cold front is what we're talking about and what's associated with our thunderstorms that are continuing to march through. And I'm going to go through the National Weather Service chat, talk about a few reports that we're seeing here uh, out at Tyler Pounds Airport. We did have a peak gust of 48 miles per hour. We've got a Skywarn spotter, which is pretty much someone who is a trained spotter out in the field. And they said quarter inch to half inch hail at Paluxy and Toll 49, which means that that's anywhere from upwards of dimes to closer to pennies or nickels in size. So that's just below our severe thunderstorm threshold. But again, still, if you get a lot of this falling out of the sky at once, it can definitely still pack a punch and it's definitely something you don't wanna be caught outside in regardless of where you are. So we'll kind of work out ahead of the main line of action at first. And notice that we have these clusters of thunderstorms that are continuing to march out ahead 
of the cold front. This includes uh, some heavy rainfall in places such as Nacogdoches, Carthage, Center, and into Lufkin. I'm very briefly gonna go over here and see if I can see anything from our Nacogdoches camera. I don't think so, depending on which way we have it turned. It looks like just some cloud cover. Can't really tell that we have any rain from that. And it, it, yeah, just some cloud cover, what appears to be a, a cluster of showers and some weaker thunderstorms that are marching through the region. So these aren't warned again but they are still moving through an environment that is conducive to if all the ingredients come into play, produce a tornado. So back to our Tyler camera uh, atop the Chase building, you can see, look at the backside of the system too. Again, once these thunderstorms clear on out, just remember that we're gonna have a lot of clearing on the backside of the system and we will have sunshine return. So that is some good news. And for those of you who live in places such as uh, Athens, Canton, even places such as Emory, Mineola. Once you get to the west, all of these areas that you see that aren't dealing with any rainfall that are on the backside of the storm system, Mineola, even through Wood County, all of these places, you're in the clear for the rest of the day. So again, places such as Emory, Canton, Athens, no more thunderstorms today, Mineola. Once this line moves through Tyler here over the next 15 to 30 minutes, you're gonna be okay for the rest of the day. Places such as Bullard as well, Gilmer, who's dealing with some heavy rain as we speak, all of these areas will be okay through the rest of the day. Again, that's once the cold front passes and gets through our region from west to east. So we'll zoom back out yet again, noticing this is the main action that we're keeping an eye out for. We've got some clusters of thunderstorms out ahead of the main event. So places such as Center, Carthage, Nacogdoches, as well as Lufkin, all of these areas, these are showers out ahead of the cold front. Still, they're moving through an environment that is conducive for tornado development. That doesn't mean there's one active right now. It just means that as environmental factors come into play and if they all work together, the right combination could have a tornado warning issued. But these look relatively weak right now. Just occasional lightning bolts on CBS 19 radar. You know, meteorologists, we typically use a lot of lightning bolts as a sign that we're seeing strengthening. So if we start to see more of these clusters pick up in lightning development, as well as maybe some heavier rain or even a little bit of hail, that's when we'll need to keep a close eye out on them. But for now, we're okay. Just some general rain showers. You might hear some rumbles of thunder again in places such as Carthage right now as we speak. This will continue to move off to the north and east as well through Nacogdoches, just to the west of center, and then a little farther on down the line near Angelina County to the north of Lufkin. Again, off to the north and east, and all of these are going to move into Louisiana as we head over the next couple of hours. So we'll zoom back out yet again and we'll start to see that we've got the line of thunderstorms that are continuing to march. Again, this is associated with the cold front that we uh, have been talking about really all throughout the week. It's brought multiple rounds of strong and severe thunderstorms, especially if you remember yesterday evening and last night. That was uh, a very scary sight for many of us here at uh, the studios and really all across the region. So again, as you get ready to maybe uh, pick your kids up from school or anything like that. Definitely just gotta be extra careful, make sure you're staying weather aware. So we'll go to the top of the line and kind of work our way down through the viewing area. Right now, there's a severe thunderstorm warning that's in play just to the north of Cass County, and this is gonna be towards places such as Boston, Corley, as well as Texarkana. This is to the north of our viewing area, which is of course some very good news. And again, this is uh, moving off to the north and east at about uh, 45 to 50 miles per hour. This portion of the line right here, we do have some radar indications. This isn't a verified report, but we do have some radar indications, especially within the core of this line, of the possibility of some penny or nickel sized hail. Typically, if we have a severe thunderstorm warning that's issued, it's gonna be for quarters in size. But so this is a little bit below the threshold. So again, not a severe thunderstorm warning. Still though, packing a punch, you can tell as this moves through places such as Hughes Spring into Cedar Springs as well, you're likely getting some very heavy rain. You're hearing some rumbles of thunder, likely dealing with some gusts of wind as well. And this is gonna move off to the east northeast as we head over the next little while. We'll put a storm track on that for you. And remember, this isn't warned, but still packing a punch in the form of, again, some very heavy rain, some gusty winds, and some pocket change sized tail. Again, not very 
uh, you know, severe threshold, but still something that can pack a punch and still something that we should respect. So again, we'll track this out moving eastward at about 45 to 50 miles per hour. This is going to include towns such as Avinger coming up here at 233, which is in about seven minutes. Haraldson, I'm uh, excuse me, Haraldson, if I pronounce one of your uh, cities wrong, I'm sorry about that. Haraldson closer to 239, Linden 244, Jefferson by 254. McLeod by 307. Good news is that once we hit 316, this portion of the line is going to be gone and into Louisiana. That's when it'll arrive into Vivian as well as Oil City by 322, and that'll continue to strengthen as it moves farther and farther to the east into places such as Louisiana. So again, this portion of the line, we've got some reports, of course, very heavy rain. You're probably going to hear some gusts of wind that are upwards of 40 to 50 miles per hour. And as well, if you look outside at times, you can see these little white cores that occasionally pop up within the heaviest of rain along this portion of the line. That means pocket change size tail, maybe even a little bit smaller. Pea size tail could be possible or as big as something such as a dime, a penny, or a nickel. So we'll clear this out, move a little bit farther down the line to the south and west and into the portion of the line that is currently warned with a severe thunderstorm warning. So this severe thunderstorm warning is in place still until 245, includes places such as Smith County, Northern Cherokee County, Western Russ County, and Western Gregg County. And this is again in place until 245, moving off to the east, northeast at about 45 to 50 miles per hour. Give myself a little space here to work with and we'll put another storm track on this portion of the line just to kind of time things out and see as far as what we could uh, expect a uh, timing to arrive in certain portions of the region. So it's not going to, oh, there we go, not going to cooperate. Okay. Do that's we need to drive? Do you want to go over the wall? Oh, no. I, uh, yeah, sure. I'll uh, reset this. I, I don't know what happened there. That was, uh, it kind of got caught on the side of the screen. I'll just kind of click out of that. Maybe it'll go away. How about now? Okay, we'll just uh, clear this out. And pointer, nope, that's the wrong thing, okay. All right, I don't know what's going on with that portion or why the drop down menu came down like that, but this is going off to the east at about 45 miles per hour, east, northeast again. And for those of you in places uh, such as Kilgore coming up at 234, that's in about six minutes from now. Again, this will also include places such as Price, closer to 242, Lakeport at 247. Again, for Henderson by 255, this will go into Tatum by 310, Marshall by 315, and then into Beckville by about 323. So again, this portion of the line still under a severe thunderstorm warning, although over the last couple of trends on radar, as far as the scans of the beam going through, it looks like it's weakening a touch as far as the heaviest of rains concerned. Haven't seen as many lightning strikes associated with this portion of the line. And again, we've had a couple of reports over at Panola, or excuse me, Paluxy and Toll 49 of a quarter to half inch sized hail, which would be anything such as dimes to pennies and close to nickels in size and also some gusts of wind anywhere from 45 to 50 miles per hour. We did have a wind gust of 47 miles per hour out at Tyler Pound. So again, this portion of the line continuing to move off to the north and east at 45 miles per hour. And we don't have any indication from the National Weather Service just yet if they were to extend this warning. That's something we'll keep a close eye out for as we head through the next 15 to 20 minutes. We'll go ahead and zoom a little farther down, farther to the south and west of the line towards Anderson County, which it looks like, given our latest reflectivity scans, it's actually picked up its juice just a little bit more. You can see these shades of white in places such as Frankston as well as just to the north and west of Palestine. I believe that's Montalba. And these portions of the line, there could be some uh, at least radar indications of something such as pocket change sized hail. Again, those of you in Frankton, this is going to be along Highway 175 just to the west of, I believe that's Cooney, just to the west and northwest as well of Cove Springs. And again, where you see these shades of white, these is, or this is what on radar is being picked up as reflectivities of hail. So if we were able to, Brett, do you think we could maybe try and use our hail estimator just to maybe get an idea of what we could be working with as far as hail size is concerned with that portion of the line? Yeah, let me go, oh, there it was. Oops, let me go back. <clears throat> let me go back. Oop, there. <laughs> But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm hitting too. I'm clicking too fast. All right. Oh, that's okay. It'll there. It is now. We have to go down there and find it. All right. 
in this portion. Oh, yeah. Because I, I think at one point, this was the portion of the storm, right, that was moving through Malakoff that had the report of an inch to an inch and a half in size? Uh, that would have been a little bit farther to the north. Oh, yeah, that would you're have been, right. You're it would right. have gone around toll 49, and it looks like that part of the cell has weakened appreciably. This is the part down toward Frankston, down 155, uh, headed toward Palestine. So right in there. So I think that looks like marbles right now or, yeah. or you know, our favorite cherry limeade sonic ice. Oh, yeah, for sure. Or even the Whataburger ice. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's the good stuff, too. The right? rectangular ice. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so this portion of the line, again, not under a severe thunderstorm warning. There is what we call a significant weather advisory, which means it's just a step below a severe thunderstorm warning threshold, which means gusts anywhere from 40 to 50 miles per hour. Again, pocket change or a little marble or pea-sized tail to be associated with that. But as it looks across the rest of the line, Brett, I don't think we're seeing too much in the form of some very large hail associated with any of this, which is, of course, some very good news. Yeah, these are the hail tracks. So that mm -hmm. when we had that one cell out by Malakoff oh, yeah. that was producing the larger hail near Athens, uh, that's right there. Yeah. Uh, you can see as that moved toward Leagueville and Murkison, Brownsboro, it weakened. And then the areas to the south, sorry, um, those areas down here toward Pointer and Frankston, that's also some maybe marble to maybe up to nickel. I don't really see a whole lot of, of larger hail inside that. Yeah, so... Yeah, well, that's always some good news. And then that's the live, that's the live hail look. Yeah, that's always some good news that we don't have to deal with, uh, you know, very large hail or really any of this uh, very dangerous severe weather, of course, because, you know, we had all those thunderstorms and tornado warn storms that moved through the region last night. Yeah, and, and so this is uh, wind speeds right now. And so this would be just kind of a raw product, so we wouldn't take the motion of the storm out. So I'm just looking to see if there's anything on the leading edge that would be of concern. Um, for instance, like right here in this darker green, you know, what are we getting there? Um, oops, I'm gonna have to turn that other thing, the uh, severe thunderstorm warning off to get that to be, to register. So let me turn that off, the watch warning box, and then let's see if we can get kind of an idea down here toward Jacksonville of any type of wind. So 47, maybe here, 41, so 47. So what, 40 to 50 mile an hour winds along that, yeah. along the leading edge of that. So uh, that, that, those, those aren't even qualifying as severe winds right now. Yeah, that would be uh, in the threshold of our significant weather advisory, which is, you know, a step below a severe thunderstorm warning, kind of something that the National Weather Service issues to, I, in a way, you know, just make sure, of course, there's something that can pack a punch, but it's not nearly as strong as something such as a severe thunderstorm warning. So it looks like, too, Brett, over the last couple of scans of radar of this particular warning, through parts of Smith, Gregg, and Rust counties, or excuse me, Cherokee counties, and even western Rust County. It looks like it started to weaken just a touch on the last few scans of uh, reflectivity that we had. Yeah, so let me, let's find reflectivity. Definitely so, yeah. We're not seeing the, and, and, and look at the, the lack of lightning. The lightning's really died off. Yeah. So it's a little heavier down toward Jacksonville, and that's where that little bit of a hail core mm -hmm. was with that marble-sized hail toward Natchez. Yeah, near Natchez and Mount Selman, and that's where we had just showed our hail tracker, and that's where we had, you know, the marble or pea or cherry limeade sonic or Whataburger ice-sized <laughs> hail. And there was a little portion of the line, too, a little farther to the south and west into Anderson County that looks like it had a little bit being picked up as well, just to the north of Palestine. And this would be a good time reminding any of you that are watching, if you're able to do so safely, you can always share your photos with us. You can send them to weather at cbs19.tv. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or on Instagram. Any of those profiles or outlets, you can send your photos, videos in only if you're able to do it safely and make sure that that's the priority first before you try and do something as far as sending in anything. So this is going to continue to move off to the east or northeast here over the next half hour to an hour into places such as Dialville by 238, which is coming up here in about two to three minutes. Elkhart closer to 246, Rusk 254, Salmon by 307. That sounds good right now. I think that's, I'm sorry if I mispronounced this. Sakui? Oh, Sa Sackle. Oh, Sackle, 309. Yeah. I look like an I. That's my bad. Uh, 324 into Alto and 329 in Linwood. So, again, this portion of the line has a little bit of what appears to be some P to marble size, maybe even close to pocket change size tail, gusts of wind. 
anywhere from 40 to 50 miles per hour. So really along the line, we've got certain portions, well, really all of it's packing its own type of punch, but luckily it looks like we're starting to see some weakening, at least some portions of the line. So that's always some good news. That's always something that we'll be able to keep a very close eye out for. Looking into the National Weather Service chat, we haven't seen any type of updates. Uh, the warning that was toward Bowie County and Texarkana has been canceled early. And we do have... Um, have Larry take a shot of our uh, sky cam, and you can see where, where we're going in here in a little bit. There oh, it is, yeah. blue sky. Look at that. All right, Impressive yeah. clearing behind this front as it passes through. Yeah, so when these, once these cells clear your area, yeah, you can expect some clearing, I think, pretty quickly after that. I did not see another, a third line forming behind that. Nope, it is, yeah, it's clearing out. So what we have right now, we have two significant weather advisories. Um, it looks like we've dropped down to a, um, a, a significant weather advisory for Greg Upshur Camp. So, that, so they've downgraded that from a warning to, a, yeah, to an advisory. Yeah, they did. All right, uh, so that takes us, so let's go to 245, and then with the significant weather advisories, we could probably uh, then think about just kind of ending this stream and then uh, just monitoring on radar. And then we, of course, have to put together a 5 o'clock news, and, of course, we're gathering all kinds of information and pictures. And if you could share your pictures with us, please do at CBS uh, 19, or weather at cbs19.tv. It looks like we've been, every once in a while, there's enough lightning out there that it just seems to find our tower. Yeah, it's <laughs> a tower magnet, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But uh, as Brett had mentioned, with the tower camera, um, you know, some really good clearing. We got some, if we could pull up the Tyler camera one more time, Larry. Thank you. Um, yeah, just look at how cool the feature of clouds looks behind the storm, like behind the oh, front. Yeah, the, right. The low, low clouds, and then we've, you, you know, got your upper level clouds that are towards the upper parts of the sky, you know, very thin and wispy. And that's going to be kind of associated at least for the next couple of hours behind this stuff. But yeah, just really cool rolling cloud features on the back side of the system. And yeah, for a good portion of the region by sunset, we might have ourselves a gorgeous one. Oh. And, uh, could be eligible for a weather pick of the day, maybe. Absolutely. And lower humidity coming in here, especially as humid as it was earlier. I think this is going to be a sudden change. So they, they talk about what sudden change offense in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Where you turn the ball over and then boom, you're down on their 20 and you're scoring a touchdown. And that sudden change turns everything around. That's what we're seeing sort of uh, here this afternoon and this evening. There's kind of a sudden change behind the front. We clear it out, humidity drops, and the sky clears. Uh, zoom in down there toward Nacogdoches and Center. That would be my one area. Uh, I'll just kind of point this out. There just seem to be, based on just, just the computer data, uh, right in this area here, this is where probably the most instability and maybe the best upper level wind uh, feature would be here late this afternoon. We only have about two and a half hours to go before the tornado watch is uh, or expires, but it could be extended. But so this is an area. There are a few cells out here by themselves. We'll see if this can sort of work over that part of the atmosphere. These thunderstorms would be moving into that area, so that would be a little bit of concern because those thunderstorms that we're watching right now here in the Tyler and Longview area moving away would move into that richer environment, and so that could cause a, a stronger thunderstorm uh, in, down in that area. But for right now, it looks like everything is sort of behaving itself. There are no warnings there currently. All right, uh, zoom that back out, Chandler. And so th this says it's still a severe thunderstorm warrant. Technically, it is till 245. But I think looking upstream from that, they're just going to go significant weather advisory, right? Yeah, probably so. I haven't seen any indications that they're going to continue the warning in our uh, National Weather Service chat. And before we did go here in the next several minutes, uh, places that are in the all clear now, as far as where the rain is cleared out, those of you all throughout Tyler, maybe southeast side of town, Need to give it a few more minutes before you start to see your skies clear, but Noonday, Chandler, New Harmony, Mount Sylvan, Swan, you're in the all clear, Owentown, Winona, Lindale, all of our western counties, excluding Anderson County, so places such as Athens, Canton, you're in the all clear, Emory, Winsboro, Mineola, Gilmer, Mount Pleasant, Sulphur Springs, all of these places are in the all clear, and I wouldn't even be surprised either here, Brett, you know, soon if we can see some tornado watches get canceled as well. Oh, as fast as the sky is clearing. Yeah, I think once we lose that severe thunderstorm warning in Smith County, I could see Smith County clearing Wood County for sure. And then uh, Titus, 
Morris and Camp County pretty soon. Franklin right after that. County and Franklin, yeah. Hopkins, Rains. Oh yeah, yeah, they'll all go. I mean, they should they'll tumble out tumble out of this pretty fast. I think by the time we go on for CBS 19 News at five, we'll be looking at just the far uh, deep eastern counties, deep east Texas counties, probably of San Augustine, Sabine, and maybe uh, Angelina, maybe Nacogdoches and, and Shelby that would still be in the watch. But again, and and that would be expiring at five. So they, those counties might last that long and that would be about it. What I'm waiting for now here is about the next four minutes is just to see what happens with this severe worn portion of the storm. But uh, Chandler, I think you'd agree. This looks like this is really weakened here. Yeah, I was going to say over the last few trends of reflectivity, uh, it's really interesting seeing this portion of the line. It looks like it maybe not necessarily disconnected, but it looks like something's happening in the atmosphere that's kind of, you know, weakening it so much. Maybe like some type of energy flow or something into the storm is cutting off its supply. And look at that next scan. Yeah. Almost cluster like now. And, and something that you mentioned earlier, maybe oh, the cold front is starting to catch up and going to overrun the, the front. All right, and so these would become, would get behind the front and, oh, yeah. and elevate and then they'd weaken. And then that's best case scenario. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it probably wouldn't be best case scenario for places like Carthage and Marshall oh, that's true. down to center, but that would still uh, knock the power out of these storms for sure. And then back toward Jacksonville and Rusk. Let's track that line into Rusk. Uh, we had some questions on Facebook about when they would be arriving in Rusk. And so maybe we can help folks out and kind of give an idea of when those thunderstorms might push down into the Rusk area and down toward Alto. See, I saw a couple people on Facebook watching from, from Alto and parts of Cherokee County. And we have some real loyal viewers down there and appreciate their time um, and their efforts to stick with us here. All right, so right now we have a severe, uh, that severe thunderstorm warning goes, this is not a portion of a severe thunderstorm. It was a significant weather advisory, meaning it could have winds. And we sampled the winds, 40 to 47 miles an hour. So in Rusk, you might get a, a brief wind gust of about 45 miles an hour. Laneville, uh, Oak Flats, Pine Hill, Dotson, and Linwood, all between now and about 3.30. So there's Linwood, there's Laneville, there's Pine Hill, there's Rusk, Elkhart. So Elkhart and all those areas within the next 45 minutes, a little gust of wind up to 40 miles an hour, couple rumbles of thunder, heavy downpour for maybe uh, 15, 20 minutes, and then the storm moves away, and then the storm would be moving over towards center and San Augustine. So this is really the last portion uh, of threat that we have in terms of a thunderstorm that could go a little bit stronger than that in that area. And we have about two more minutes before we're going we're gonna to break away from this um, this stream, and if we have to come back on for maybe a severe thunderstorm warning or something, that would get a little bit stronger than that. But with uh, you know 40, 45 mile an hour wind, I would not expect any damage out of this unless it's hitting something that was so weakened from the storm last night or so weakened from the previous storms uh, in the past few weeks. And that could be an, uh, that could be a possibility. But for the most part, the wind strength here should not cause or create any damage. We have not had any reports of large hail. The last report of any hail of, uh, of maybe of significance was the half inch hail that was near uh, the toll 49 in southern parts of Smith County. But the last time we did any uh, hail scans, it was marbles, maybe. Uh, maybe just little pea-sized tail. We had a report of some pea-sized tail also, and, and that was it. All right, so we're down to our final minute here. Uh, we've been answering questions for you. If you have any more questions on Facebook, please go ahead, post those questions. We'll try to answer those to you. We'll leave this up on, the, on our KYTX CBS 19 Facebook page for uh, more questions, and uh, hopefully we can get uh, some answers back to you if you have any. Uh, but as for the rest of the afternoon, we still have that tornado watch that goes until... Uh, Five o'clock. That's for the counties down here to the deep east. Maybe we can go back to that map. It would be the yeah, very. There it is. So this is the current watch. It's in effect till five o'clock. Smith County is still in there. Cherokee County, but we expect these counties to be dropped here probably by three o'clock. The deep east Texas counties. This watch will continue until about five o'clock this afternoon. All right, for meteorologist Chandler Jordan, I'm Chief Meteorologist Brett Anthony. Thanks for watching our live coverage and our live streaming coverage here from CBS 19 and our weather team. Have a great afternoon, everyone.